Good afternoon and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday, the 7th of September 2020, and the time has just gone 12.08 for the summer time. And it's been a fairly positive start to the European session. We've seen decent gains uh, across the major European indices. Uh, they've racked, they've kind of clawed back a lot of the ground that they lost uh, in the latter half of Friday's session. Um, for those of you that they didn't see what was going on, the kind of big story in the last few days was because we've seen a few, um, we've seen a lot of uncertainty in the uh, much talked about US tech sector. Uh, at the back end of the last week, we had some quite a few negative sessions uh, on Thursday and Friday, uh, particularly for the NASDAQ 100, very much tech focused. Um, we've had a huge losses were incurred, very big losses were incurred on Thursday. Loss, large losses were incurred intraday on Friday, but, the, but the, the, even though the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 closed in the red on Friday, they were still well off the lows of the session. So the market's kind of finding its feet in that regard. US equities, the actual cash stocks, will, be cl will not be trading today because it is Labor Day in the US, although the index futures are still trading, but um, it's quite common for the volumes and volatility in those index futures to be very low on a holiday day. So that's why it's almost like we're seeing, it's, it seems, to, you know, it's almost like European equity markets um, are pushed higher today, possibly for because there, there's, there, there's not so much fear that all of a sudden European equities are going to get heavily influenced by what's going on in the, the likes of Apple and Tesla uh, and Microsoft, because as I mentioned, US actual in individual shares will not be trading today. Um, so it's also worth noting, we had a pretty good job support from the, from the US on Friday. Uh, by and large, it was, things were well received. The, the number, the job creation was essentially uh, in line with, with the ex uh, expectations. Uh, the unemployment rate uh, dropped, dropped considerably. Average earnings were not too far away from expectations as well. So, so that's so it was a good job support. It has weight to the argument that the US economy is continuing to, to recover, but the tech story really kind of dominated the headlines. Um, in the last you know, 24 hours, 48 hours, um, we've had, we have had some mixed uh, trade figures from China. The exports are quite strong. They grew by 9.5%, easily topping the 7.1% growth uh, that economists were expecting. But on the flip side, imports dropped by just over 2%. And that was a, that was a, that was well shy of the you know, growth of one tenth of one percent that economists are predicting. But so it shows, which could be a sign that in ch internal demand in China seems to be weak. The strong exports would, would, would point to ex strong external demand, but that could be a sign that um, personal protective equipment, uh, which China makes a lot of, uh, could be in high demand. So um, just that the, the, the strong exports figures don't necessarily mean that the United States, Australia, Europe, and the likes are all happy to happy to buy goods. It could be to do with um, PPE, uh, as people are referring to it. Um, in really on the um, on the political front, um, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the UK, has made it clear that if a free trade agreement has not been agreed with the European Union by the 15th of October, uh, he's content to walk away from the table, and that would that would probably pave the way for a WTO terms of trading. Uh, in terms of international trade come um, January 2021. So we're seeing a bit of pressure on the British pound on the back of that. For those of you who follow the the, uh, the, the video regularly, I, I keep the same structure. I'll talk about the week ahead. I run through the big indices, the big currency pairs, and then the big commodities. If you go to cmcmarkets.com, you can find our week ahead article under insights. And then, and then you scroll down from insights, latest news analysis, this week, tomorrow, we have first half figures from JD Sports. Uh, we have second quarter numbers out from Slack Technologies, the messaging company. They're one of the companies which probably did quite well out of the uh, the working from home, um, working remotely craze that's taken off in the, in the last number of months amid the amid amid the uh, the lockdown. Um, no real change is expected from the Bank of Canada uh, interest rate decision on Wednesday. Well, we've had some numbers from China. This week, as I mentioned, we've already had the trade numbers come out uh, overnight. Uh, during the week, we have Chinese CPI and PPI, and this will give us a flavor for what demand is like in China. We've already seen that the import numbers weren't, weren't good. That suggests weak internal demand, but let's see what the CPI and the PPI numbers churn out. Dunelm have first have full year numbers um, on, um, 
on, on Thursday. They're one of the kind of success stories uh, as far as uh, as far as retail goes. They've done, done quite well. Uh, the European Central Bank, no major changes expected from their monetary policy. Their update will be on Thursday. But listen now for any comments in relation to how the recovery is going, because some of the some of these of the services and manufacturing numbers from some of the big eurozone economies have kind of tapered off. So, so kind of listen up for any commentary if they're concerned about that. We have first half figures from Morrison's. By and large, the UK supermarket sector has done quite well um, amid the amid the crisis. Um, we saw a lot of kind of pe people were going out snapping up um, food items because of because there's a lot more because amid the pandemic. Uh, we have four quarter numbers from Peloton. Um, the well, technology and fitness company um, on Thursday. We also have the, as we do every Thursday, the jobless claims reading from the US. Uh, on Friday, we have the GDP reading for the UK. That's going to be the, um, the, the monthly report for the month of July. And we also have US CPI on Friday. So starting off with the uh, FTSE 200, I'll run through the FTSE, the DAX, the Dow and the S&P. And I'll cover the indices section. So we've had a big move to the upside from the lows of March into the highs of August, sorry, the highs of August of June. But if you can see here, ever since then, we've been in a, in a downward trend. You know, we've had a couple of lower lows and lower highs. In fact, last Friday, we fell back to a level last seen uh, in, in early, well, mid-May, which, which is quite worrying. But we can see here, though, that today's candle has been quite bullish. It hasn't really recouped the losses of Friday, and it certainly hasn't recouped the losses that were occurred on Thursday. Like I said, the tech sell-off in the US really began on Thursday, and that drove Europe, that repulsed European markets lower. So we're still below the lows of of uh, Thursday. So we're, we're still in this kind of downward trend of the last of the last few weeks. Um, if you do manage, you're going to break below the recent low in at five thousand seven hundred and sixty-seven. I could take us back down towards this zone here, down around 5,660. And if we go below that, we could be heading down towards 5,600. Any moves to the upside are likely to incur resistance in around this area here, 6,000. Not only is it a big psychological number, but also we have seen some consolidation in that zone. Uh, if we go beyond that, we could then be looking heading towards this blue line, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 6,106. And notice how... Uh, in August, on a couple of occasions, that metric acted nicely as resistance. And if a metric has been has been of importance in the past, it makes it more likely it will be of importance in the future, although there are no guarantees. Uh, taking a look now, what's going on over in Germany? The DAX, the German market is in better shape than the US than the US market. In fact, on Thursday, in the first half of the session, Europe before the tech before the US tech sector dragged everything lower. Um, the European stock markets were doing quite well on Thursday morning. Um, in fact, the, the DAX hit a multi-month high, hit a bit of hit its highest level since February. So we're talking about uh, highest level in over six months, nearly nearly a seven-month high. So things were looking quite positive uh, on, the, uh, on the DAX uh, on, on Friday. We can see here that we have moved lower. It did trade below this blue line here at the 50-day moving average, but it closed well off or well above it. In, on today's candle, even though we traded down towards the 50-day moving average, we're still well above it. If you can hold above that metric, that blue line, it's likely that the wider upward trend of the last few months is going to continue. I show you press on higher from here. We could be looking at heading back up towards 13,200, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting uh, the the, uh, the the recently uh, the early September highs. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting this area here in around 13,500. Like you notice how on a few occasions, the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, acted nicely as support. On a few occasions, it's traded below, but but, but when it has traded below, it was short-lived and, and it quickly rebounded, as you saw here on the 21st of August. So if we do have a significant break below that, that could be a sign, maybe there's, there's some weakness in the upward trend. And if we do move lower than the 50-day moving average, Head back down towards this zone here in around 12,600. We can see on a few occasions there's a bit of uh, consolidation in that zone and uh, in early August. Let's take a look at what's going on over the US. Like I said, US index, the index futures are, tr are trading today, but the actual cash stocks, individual shares, are not trading today. Um, so if we take a look at what's going on in the US, 
you know, we're talking about we're at multi-month highs. We're at the highs in early last week and the first few days of last week. We were at levels last seen in February. So we're talking about, you know, multi-month highs, but we obviously had quite a very aggressive um, sell-off on the Thursday, another pretty uh, aggressive sell-off on the Friday. We haven't, we're kind of trading in a fairly small range in today's session. And I suspect activity in the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 and the, and the Nasdaq are a lot likely to be quite low today, as I mentioned, US is on holidays. But even though this has been a brutal sell-off, you know, the wider trend is still very much intact. And even though we've had a pretty painful sell-off in a few sessions, we're still comfortably above the 50-day moving average, this blue line here. And if you could continue to hold above that metric, it's likely that the wider upward trend is going to continue. Um, if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at you know, heading back up towards 29,000. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting um, the kind of recent highs, which come into play in around just, 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 just shy of 29,200. You know, once again, I've talked about it before, how metrics being important in the past are more likely to be of importance in the future. On a few occasions, the 50-day moving average, the blue line acts nicely as, as uh, a support. So keep an eye on that, on that should we see a large move in the downside. But even if you do drift lower from here, support could come into play in around here, in around 27,449. And if you go below that, we could then head back down towards the 50-day moving average. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. So as you can see here, a series of all-time highs were, were notched up. Huge sell-off was 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 a uh, very big sell-off was, was was registered on Thursday. Quite large sell-off was registered on Friday as well. Similar situation whereby today's range is quite low. Volatility is going to probably is likely to be quite low today. But even though we had had a few negative days at the back of last week, quite sizable ones. The wider upward trend is still very much intact. And to be honest, even if you can hold above, you need, now things are like we're, you know, if you look at the index futures, we're still expecting when cash trading does begin in you know over 24 hours, we're still expecting it to to open above 3,400. And that was a metric which, on a few occasions, acted as resistance on the way up, so it could act as support. And that 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 the uh, the market uh, has had a sell-off. So even if we do drift lower uh, from, from these areas, support could be found from this area here in a 3,550. Notice how the lows of Friday there thereabouts coincided, you know, found support with the lows from late August. And even if you go below that, this area here in a 3,326 collected support. Uh, once again, the 50-day moving average, this blue line acted nicely as support on a few occasions. Uh, and, that, and that comes into play at 3,309. Take a look what's going on with the indices. Sorry, I said indices, I meant currencies. We just finished indices. Um, the dollar is uh, as yet again moved moved a bit higher. Uh, we, we saw the dollar close higher last week on Thursday. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it was trading, it was trading higher on Friday, but ended up closing slightly lower. Uh, with that, we've seen weakness in the in the in the euro and the British pound in the last few sessions. Even though, you know, just over a week ago, or just in, just less than a week ago, the euro dollar hit a 28-month high. It has been drifting lower since the the dollar has firmed up a bit, but still, the wider upward trend of the last few months is still very much intact. You know, if you could hold above uh, this area here in around one spot, 1696. It's like that the, the broader positive trend is going to continue. And even if you go below that, not too far away below the 50-day moving average, which actually nicely has support back in March, back in May rather, uh, that, that could easily um, act as support, potentially act as support. Uh, and that comes into play in at one spot, 1656. You know, even the last few sessions, we didn't really, even when the dollar has been stronger, we didn't really manage to push the euro that much below 118, uh, one spot 18. So. The upper trend is 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 uh, still intact. If you take out the recent high and we go kind of well north of 120, we could then be looking at targeting one spot 2140. And we haven't seen one spot 2140. This is this area here. We haven't seen that metric, we have that level since May, mid May 2018. Taking a look now at pound dollar. Like I mentioned, we've seen a bit of rebound in the US dollar, so, so that's an issue for for sterling. But also what's an issue for sterling is as I mentioned at the top of the uh, the webinar, there's a bit of Brexit uncertainty. The British government have essentially said if we don't get a deal by 
15th of October, willing to walk away, you know, which, which paved the way for kind of a WTO style uh, trading arrangement between the UK and the, and the European Union come early 2021. And that has put a bit of pressure on the British pound, not a huge amount, but it hasn't, it hasn't helped. It, it's, it's, it's added to the kind of recent um, move to the downside. Uh, only uh, only on Tuesday last week, the British pound against the US dollar hit its highest level since mid-December 2019. So it, already co- it was already coming off quite a bullish run. It was giving back some of those gains. The political uncertainty has put additional pressure on the, on the pound today. So if we do drift a bit lower, we could head back down toward this area here, one spot 30. It's a big number. On a few occasions, that region acted, acted as support. So keep an eye for 130. And even if, if we go below that, this blue line here, the 50 day moving average in at one spot, 29.29, collected support. But keep in mind, in the last few months, buying on the dip has been a popular strategy. So if we do look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading back up towards 134. We could be looking at retesting the, the September high. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at testing the high that was posted uh, in mid December last year in at one spot, 30, one spot 35.15. Lastly, coming on to uh, commodities, starting off with gold. So in the last few months, there's been a strong inverse relationship between the US dollar and gold. So it's no coincidence that we've seen a stronger dollar for much of the last few sessions. So the dollar's turnaround began on, on the kind of, around the kind of lunchtime or, the, or late morning of Tuesday, the 1st of September. So it's no coincidence we're now seeing, we've, we've seen a stronger dollar in the last few sessions. So it's no coincidence we've now seen a bit of weakness in gold. But but the move in gold hasn't been particularly aggressive to the downside. Even when gold has come under pressure, it's still well above its 50-day moving average, and it's still well, and it's still come, and it's still comfortably above the kind of big psychological number of 1900. Even the lows of late August didn't quite get down as low as 1900. So the wider upward trend is still intact. Keep in mind, it was only about a month ago uh, it had an all-time high. So the wider trend is still very much intact. If you do look the press on higher from here. We could be looking at testing the highs of last week uh, in around 1963. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading towards the psychologically important 2000. And then if we, just, we could be looking at he- testing the kind of mid-August highs. And then if you go beyond that, we could be looking at try retesting the all-time high. Um, if we do have a decent break below 1900, we could be looking heading down towards this zone here below in uh, 1863. We can see here that that was the lows of the middle of August after the aggressive sell-off. And it's only really if you have a decent break below that, could then we begin to think, okay, maybe we could be like heading back down towards 1800. And notice how the kind of general zone of 1800, uh, in around 1813, down to around 1795, that general area, um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of consolidation before had the next move to the upside. So if we do head down towards that zone, uh, if there's an aggressive move to the downside, that area might act as support. And lastly, I'll come on to Brent crude oil, the November contract. And we finally had a bit of an interesting move in the oil market. Um, the oil market has undergone a large recovery between late April uh, and into early August. It, it hit a five month high. Um, hit a five month high in August. Didn't really make much more ground uh, in late August. It got close enough to the early August high, but but it hasn't really moved it hasn't really moved on. In the last few sessions we've seen a move to the downside. There'd be concerns about uh, falling gasoline demand in the U- in the US. Uh, the Russian energy minister over the last few days uh, talked about um, seeing global demand for oil tapering off. It also hasn't helped that when you've seen large uncertainty in the stock market, which is going to risk on assets, that's also impacted the kind of perception of what's going on uh, in the uh, in in um, in oil. So we've seen aggressive move, we've seen a fairly decent move to the downside in the oil market. Uh, we're currently trading at 42, just just north of 42 bucks a barrel for for Brent crude oil November contract. Um, notice how you know the level that we're pretty much at right now is not too far away from this zone which acted at support on a few occasions. If you can hold above that level, it's likely that the wider upper trend could continue. But if you do move lower from here, we can head back down towards the, the lows of late June, uh, in around 40 spot 22, and you know down to kind of 40, 40 bucks a barrel itself, that zone could act as support. But keep in mind, the wider trend is to the up, upside. So if we do move higher from here, we could be retesting this blue line, the 50 day moving average, which acted on a few occasions recently as resistance. So 
if, it, if, if you know that resistance would need to be kind of cleared before we can look at retesting the kind of 46 zone. Uh, that's all from this week. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.